last week we learned that Jacob had married Leah and Rachel and had two wives all because of Laban's sin of deceit. He tricked him. And now God told Jacob to return to his homeland of Canaan. Um, so Jacob gathered all his possessions, his camel, sheep, cattle, and with his wives and children, they headed back to Canaan. How do you think Jacob felt about going back home? You know, he might have been missing his mom, his dad, and but what about his brother Esau? Would Esau still be angry and want to kill him? It had been a long time since Jacob left, left home. Well, that must have been something that Jacob wondered about because the Bible tells us that he decided to send some messengers ahead to talk to Esau. They were to tell Esau about Jacob's family and his riches and ask for favor, for grace from him. The messengers found Esau and delivered Jacob's message. When they returned to Jacob, they brought news that frightened him very much. They said, we went to your brother Esau and now he is coming to meet you and 400 men are with him. When Jacob heard that Esau was coming with 400 men, he thought that meant Esau was coming to attack him and his family. He was very afraid for the lives of his children and wives. And it had all started with his sin of deceit. Why had he tricked his father? Why had he hurt his brother? Jacob had sinned by wanting his own way, and now he feared for his family's safety. So Jacob made a plan to protect his wives and children. He divided them into two groups, so it would be harder for Esau to attack all of them all at once. Then he cried out to God in prayer. Jacob honored God in his prayer uh, by thanking him for his faithfulness and mercy, and he reminded God of his promise that he would return safely to his home. Then he prayed, Save me, I pray, from the hand of my brother Esau, for I am afraid he will come and attack me and also the mothers and their, with their children. After he prayed, Jacob went, um, sent some of his animals as a gift to Esau. In the evening, Jacob sent the rest of his animals, his wives, his children, and servants across a nearby river while he stayed behind. I'm not sure if Jacob was a very brave man, but surely I would be so scared too. That night when Jacob was um, sleeping, something strange happened. Thinking he was alone, but Jacob woke up and he was surprised to find a man there with him. The man began to wrestle with Jacob in the darkness. Jacob and the man wrestled all night long. Finally, the man touched Jacob's hip and knocked it out of joint causing Jacob to have a limp. Jacob realized at this point he was not wrestling with just an ordinary man, but with a heavenly visitor. Jacob held onto the man and would not let go until he received a blessing. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob, whose name you know, meant deceiver, was now to be called Israel, which means prince with God. God was changing Jacob to be a new person. He even Jacob gave Jacob a new name. Jacob never forgot this night. The next day, Jacob limped as he went to be with his family across the river. Seeing Esau and his 400 men coming towards him, Jacob arranged his family in the safest way possible, then went on ahead of them. Jacob was still afraid. He wanted Esau to know that he was coming in peace, so he bowed to the ground seven times as he approached them. But Esau wasn't there to attack Jacob and his family. Instead, he ran to meet Jacob and hugged him. Then they both cried. God had answered Jacob's prayer. Esau was happy that Jacob had returned home. Sometime after Jacob had returned to Canaan, God told him to go back to Bethel. At Bethel, God appeared to Jacob and reminded him of Jacob's new name, Israel. He would be known by his new name until the present day. Maybe you've heard that name in the news. It is the name, name of a country now, and many people in that country are from the family of Jacob and are called the children of Israel. That day when God appeared to Jacob, he told Jacob that the land he had promised to Abraham and Isaac would belong to Jacob and his children and their children after them. Then God promised that kings would come from Jacob's family. 
the land, the name, and children that God had promised Abraham was now promised to Jacob. Jacob built an altar and set up a stone as a special marker in worship of God. Jacob was such a different man from now. He had learned that God kept his promises and would work in his life to build godly character in him. God had truly changed Jacob's life. And know that God wants to make you more like Jesus and God can make you new too.